Hi, hi, hi. So um, you're inspiring computer science student or something like this. And uh, you probably have a course that teaches you Linux architecture or computer architecture. And in this course, very probably you will have to learn assembly code. And of course, this assembly code you will need to execute in Linux, <laughs> of course. So if you are a happy Mac, MacBook user, then it's a problem because, uh, yeah, MacBook is not, it's Unix, but uh, unfortunately, Linux assembly not work in the same way as in the Linux. There is a few things that you will need to do in order it to work. So in this video, I will uh, teach you three, three simple uh, solutions for this problem. Okay, uh, so let's start with, uh, quickly start with the clumsy ones. So first one is uh, VirtualBox. So I would say that um, it's probably the easiest way because you just install VirtualBox and uh, it's kind of working out of um, box. <laughs> but uh, there is a lot of cons that first of all, VirtualBox is the shittiest piece of software I have ever used. And it looks like something from 20 years ago. Uh, and it's slow and uh, to connect to it you will need 10 time, ten seconds to start it, 10 more seconds to do some stuff. And the second uh, and the third is that in VirtualBox uh, you will need to spend quite a bit of effort to make... So when you have virtual machine uh, you need to somehow make files, some files on virtual machine, share with your system files because you will have a code, Linux, uh, like some assembly code and you, need, you want these files to be accessible from virtual machine. And so you need to kind of share some files and folders. But it's, I don't know, when I was first using VirtualBox, it, I spent, I don't know, five hours and I didn't manage to do it. There, there, there is a lot of people who managed, I, I just tell them that it takes time, it requires time. Of course, there is a, some more decent software like Parallels or VMware, but they are decent because they're, you know, they're, <laughs> so they're not free. So, uh, yeah, you will need to pay and it's also, also you will have to wait quite a bit of time be before the machine starts and then you can open browser, open console, and you need to set up the terminal there. So if you have some nice fancy terminal like me, uh, you will need to set up the new terminal there and it's kind of fussy. Of course, you can use some kind of SSH, maybe you don't know, but you know, when you have some remote server, you can uh, connect to the server uh, via SSH. For example, right now I'm connecting to my Yandex uh, server, you see. So right now I am in Linux server uh, that uh, Yandex Cloud. There is also Amazon Cloud and something like this. But uh, yeah, it also requires time to figure out how to connect with this specific uh, virtual machine to this virtual machine. Yeah, and uh, the second option is to use uh, cloud. So you can just uh, buy some Amazon Cloud or Linode Cloud and. Uh, on this remote server, it will be yours, and you will do all your stuff there. You can have your doc, your GitHub credentials there, so you can post uh, code to, to the GitHub. So it's kind of nice and um, nice to use. And also, maybe it's your uh, way, because in the future, uh, probably you'll need to host your server, your web page, or something like this. Maybe not, maybe if you need, then it's a pretty decent solution to have your own server and manage stuff there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's also not free. Probably it's like 10 to 20 euros a month. And, uh, okay, let's discuss good way. And it's not only good way, I think it's also the easiest way and the quickest way. So it's Docker. And please don't be afraid. Because when I was a little first year student, uh, I didn't know nothing about uh, programming. Almost nothing. <laughs> and uh, I watched like 10 tutorials about Docker and I didn't understand a shit out of Docker. So I thought it's super, some really complex stuff. And also I had a problem that uh, I saw that I, that I need to understand fully something to use it. 
in programming it's not true you don't need to understand it fully you need to understand it uh, enough to make it work yeah so um, it's very true for docker it's a really complex software it's really complex stuff but you don't need to understand this complex stuff for to be able to run code in linux you don't need to understand complex stuff yeah it's very easy so first thing uh, let's uh, i really recommend you to dive deep to dive a bit in docker so what you need to do is to watch this tutorial for beginners it's really a good course um, i it was the last course i watched about docker because i fi finally understand what docker is about and how to use it it's only two hours it's really not much and uh, you will need only i don't know maybe first hour to use it actually so there's much more than you need for our simple example but i still recommend it it's a great course great teacher please watch it yeah you can do it after tutorial or maybe you can do it right now and then return to this tutorial as you wish uh, after you watch this tutorial let's install docker install docker it's very easy to do you just type docker install desktop for mac and there will be first second or third link and here we go and install to the chip linux chip intel chip in this tutorial i won't be talking about intel uh sorry uh, about the M1, M2 chips. Uh, probably there is uh, the very. Probably it will be very similar in this scenario, but I will be talking about only Intel chips, how to do it in Intel. Um, maybe it will also work for M1. I don't know. So after you install Docker, you can uh, you will have some icon of Docker, something like this. It's uh, say the Docker is running. And you can check that it's running with Docker PS. Actually, this course uh, on YouTube also will teach you how to do it. Okay, so as you see, our Docker uh, is running. It says something, some containers that I am running right now. So it's yeah, it's good. After we make sure that Docker running, we can uh, create some folder. So I will go to my TMP folder and in this TMP folder I will create uh, some mm, macdir linux uh, tutorial. So here uh, I will create a docker file. So it's very easy. I will use my vim. You can use whatever you w want to. And we will just uh, copy and paste. By the way, you will be able to access this article in the description. So, yeah. After we create this Docker file, it's actually very easy. We just uh, specify that we will use an Ubuntu image, and uh, in this image, we'll run three commands. So, first, update then install gcc and install make because if you run uh, if you do an op course or sorry uh, architecture course so probably you will use uh, maybe c and probably assembly so you'll need a gcc for this and you actually don't have to have make but it's a great tool that i use all the time so i included it and i highly recommend you to check it out um, then we can create docker compose uh, what is Docker Compose? Probably you already know. It's um, it, because uh, otherwise you will need to specify long, long Docker commands like docker up uh, minus v volumes and then uh, command and then yeah, it's name dash t name for container. So we don't want to specify it every time. We want it to be specified like immediately. So we create just Docker Compose file. So, nvim docker compose yaml. Oh, okay. So what's happening in docker compose file? So it specifies name for the image. So this this docker file will produce image named Linux image. And uh, yeah, we specify it because we will build in the context dot so we will build image that we will build docker file that in current folder 
will name it a Linux image, and uh, when we run our Docker Compose, it will be uh, named container, will be Linux container. The command will be sleep 10, uh, 100, 1000, so it means that uh, our container will be sleeping for for 1000 seconds. You can choose whatever time, it's just, I choose 1000. And volumes, it's the most important stuff, I think. So we specify that all current folder will be shared with container in folder code. So if it's, you remember in, in virtual box or other stuff, other uh, um, virtual machines, it was pretty hard to share uh, code with your virtual machine. With containers, it's super easy with Docker because just these two lines do the job. So let's run Docker container. So for this, you need to run Docker Compose app dash D. Dash D means detached mode. So otherwise, uh, Docker container will be like, otherwise will, this terminal will be possessed by Docker container and you can do anything you will need to create a new one. But yeah, uh, let's run it detached. So as you see, it started. And uh, yeah, you can stop it with docker uh, compose uh, stop. Yeah. So after it started, you need to SSH inside the container. It's very easy to do with docker. As you see, I already inside docker. So uh, I'm already in Linux. So as you see, mm, I have a normal Linux software, how to say, it's not software, but a normal Linux architecture here. <laughs> so in here, there is a file code with all the files that I have here. Yeah, so it's Docker Compose, CML, and other stuff. So if you, for example, uh, create in this folder, for example, I can have a vim new file dot uh, c. Okay, there is no vim. Probably there is a VI, okay, maybe nano. Okay, there is no nano. Probably I should have installed nano, but um, it doesn't matter because, uh, yeah, we can just uh, HM high inside, uh, inside our new file.c. Okay, so you can see that we created a new file and um, we can run this file with gcc new file .c. Of course, it won't compile. Yeah, but we you see it's it's a Linux gcc. And to exit this container, I can just uh, type uh, sorry not dot, um, command. I think it's uh, command d. Ah oh, no no, it's uh, shift d. Uh, control sorry, control d. Yeah. Um. And to exit the container, I, you can just try to run uh, Control D and it will exit. And if you see, now we also have a new file C in our system. So yeah, I think it was helpful. Okay, I hope it was helpful. And uh, now you understand that it's really not that hard. We just created a new container and we run it and uh, we created a new file there. Actually, you can create new file here and then uh, what I am do usually do was doing, it was here I am uh, I'm like constantly inside the terminal and I am writing uh, in my ID or I can write inside, uh, uh, inside my own terminal, it's my Mac, so new file. Yeah, I can uh, hi, uh, it is from uh, Mac OS, yeah, and all the changes will be in the Docker, because example, if I do cut uh, code um, uh, new file, .c, you see, it changed. So here I'm only compiling stuff and running stuff, so if I do cd code, I can run this file again, gcc, uh, new file.c yeah. so it's very convenient you can run uh, you can write code whenever you want in your terminal in your ID and then just 
executed is GCC here. Yeah, so uh, hope again, hope it was helpful. See you around. Thank you.